Hi everybody, welcome back to the Bloom with Becca podcast. I'm your host Becca. How are we doing today? Thank you for tuning in. This is episode 15 and guys, we are talking all things productivity. I'm here to spill all my productivity tips. Now listen, I'm a girl who is not naturally organized and I'm someone who needs to implement a system in place in order to actually get my shit done. Add in the element of being someone who's self-employed and so it's more important than ever for me that I have self-discipline. I feel like these tips definitely are transferable if you're a student, if you work in an office, you're like me, you're self-employed, or also if you don't work and you're just wanting to implement some productivity tip into your daily lifestyle to help with just personal development. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into it. Hi! How are we all doing? I am feeling quite energized today. I had an early start this morning. I feel like I'm finally getting in the groove of finding a routine and actually using January to motivate me. Today's a busy work day. I thought it'd be, I don't know, just a perfect time to sit down and talk all things productivity. We've just come out of the Christmas period, the holiday period, where a lot of us slow down and I know for me when I take time off work, it's the like getting back into things, getting back on track, getting back into habits. That's almost the hardest part and I just want to say if you're struggling you're not alone but I'm here to help I'm your little I'm today I'm going to be your little internet bestie cheering you on and you got this I really don't have much to update you on like I said um this week's been pretty good for me in terms of work and healthy habits like I'm really proud of myself I've been in the gym a bit more this week um let me tell you about the gym. I think I'm finally finding my groove with it, like actually seeing progress with weightlifting. I've been weightlifting for, honestly, it's probably coming up to like four years. Is that even right? Very on and off. And the beginning of my weightlifting journey was very sort of love and hate. Um, I definitely got into working out at the gym because seeing fitness influencers wanting their body types, which obviously is not a great goal to have, and it's never going to get you far in the gym if that's your goal, that you just want a six pack and you want like, well, for me, you want a big butt, you you want to build a butt, that absolutely can be a goal, but like you need to pair it with actually enjoying what you're doing and seeing the benefits mentally physically rather than just aesthetically it's been a long journey for me like actually enjoying the gym and I have to give so much credit to Will because he's someone who's been weightlifting at the gym for like 10 years and so I remember I started with it a little bit by myself just out of curiosity and I went with a friend and I remember I literally went like twice a month it was so (laughs) not consistent and I also remember feeling frustrated at never seeing any results and it's like girl you're not gonna go to the gym once do three sets of eight squats and have your butt look completely different no it doesn't work like that um and it wasn't until I started going with Will and then I remember like we literally would have arguments in the gym because I kind of would be such a princess about it I like didn't love it I didn't get the point of it at first I definitely looked at it in this very basic way of like well you're just picking up heavy stuff and putting it down like this is not fun it's not sport I don't know why I'm going on such a ramble about this but I just I feel like it's a good time to talk about it because January is the time when people are picking up new healthy habits and maybe you are going to the gym for the first time And I feel like I've only now, after like four years, reached a point of getting it. And I'm not saying like this, I'm not saying that to discourage you. I'm not saying, oh, it's going to take you four years to enjoy the gym. Not at all. I'm just talking about my personal journey with it. But I also want the main message to be like, if it is your thing, it is so worth it. Because I now really enjoy going to the gym. And for a long time, I never thought I was going to say that. I would get, like I said, frustrated at not seeing results, but giving myself like ridiculous expectations and timeframes to see results. But also like frustrated with myself for not 
enjoying it and I just thought of myself as like well you're just lazy or you're not fit you're not healthy and it wasn't that it was like just not adjusting exercises to fit me and what I like doing but yeah it's only now that I'm like first and foremost enjoying it seeing progress lifting heavier like each time I go which is a really rewarding feeling um feeling just more confident with like different exercises and I'm definitely not a gym guru I'm never here to give advice I've filmed a like week of workout video on YouTube about a year ago and I really enjoyed making it but it definitely was from a like an amateur standpoint there's so many fitness influencers out there that you can get information from but also be careful like who you get information from because anyone can make that kind of content and the thing with weightlifting is like you want to make sure you're doing it right that's been a huge lesson for me something I want to get better at is being able to go alone and not rely on will and enjoy going to the gym by myself feeling confident by myself feeling like I can do whatever exercise I want there's certain exercises I will never do if I'm not there with will which I don't like so yeah if you're new to the gym keep it up girly keep up your goals it is a long run but it's so worth it when you start to really feel a difference see a difference even I've seen people talking about this on social media and I definitely relate to it um it is like not even halfway through January when I'm filming this and I have caught myself on numerous occasions feeling stressed out because I already feel behind which is just ridiculous and I know it's through comparison especially because of what I do and the niche that I'm in and seeing so many people like I don't know hit the ground running with January so yeah just a reminder go at your own pace you're exactly where you need to be and it's the start of January, like you're not behind, you cannot be behind. What else? I really don't have much to update you on. Honestly, this past week's been good, it's been productive, it's been, I've been taking care of myself, which feels amazing. But one aspect I'm definitely noticing within my like normal weeks is how lonely I get. And I think I need to make a change. I don't know how, I don't know what. If you're self-employed or even if you work from home, um, if you're someone who does remote working, I know you must get me that if you don't make the effort to go and see people, it can really get to you. And I know loneliness is actually quite a serious thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm just realizing like if I just go about my normal week, like making videos at home, editing them at home, I mean, I might go out to vlog a little outside, but I do not interact with anyone other than Will who comes home in the evening after his job. That's not great. Um, I, I don't know if I need like a bigger circle of people who do something similar to me or not even that, just people who have flexibility when it comes to where they can work. I think it'd be really nice to meet up with people more and co-work. I really enjoy doing that. It's really motivating as well and just to get you out the house but yeah loneliness I might do a whole episode around loneliness I don't know I'm planning episodes for the upcoming weeks and I always love hearing what you guys have to say what you want to hear from me recommendation of the week I watched the documentary called David Holmes the boy who lived and it's basically this documentary about Harry Potter Daniel Radcliffe his stunt double during the Harry Potter films and how I believe they were filming the last film um when his stunt double David had an accident whilst working um and it left him paralyzed I don't know how many of you know that story I didn't know anything about it I could not recommend that documentary enough I keep thinking about it. I watched it a few days ago. It's so hard hitting, but the messaging behind it and the kind of person that David is, with just his like outlook on life is incredible. What an incredible human for him to take something so horrible, career ending, life changing, like, in a, you know, a really negative thing and put such a spin on it and makes you realize how precious and fragile life is and to like really make the most of what you have around you. I don't know, it was hard hitting. Like I hope Will doesn't mind me saying this, it made Will cry. I just really recommend it. I, like I said, I've been lonely all week 
I like haven't really spoken to anyone and I can feel that I've been excited to like tell someone about this documentary so there you go I'm recommending it to you guys go watch it let me know what you think okay productivity we're becoming productive queens in 2024 now I know there are a million and one videos books podcasts surrounding the topic of productivity already out there and I wanted to be really cautious of not watching any of it, consuming any of it before scripting this episode. So the tips I'm going to give you, you can trust, are very much (laughs) tried and tested by me. And these are tips I use every day, tips that really make a difference. And honestly, some of them are so simple. They're so easy to implement into your routine, tiny little changes mindset shifts that will turn around your productivity game trust me and like I said I'm a girly who is not naturally organized and so I need all the help I can get I'm not like your type a person I'm not I'm more of a (laughs) one day at a time just do as much as you can girl I'm a hard worker and you absolutely can be a hard worker but without any discipline or productivity systems in place you're not going to get as much done as you want. Okay, first tip, and we're going to start quite broad, but I didn't want to overlook this. And so when it comes to thinking about your productivity goals in regards to work, fitness, life, relationships, whatever it is, it is so important to know your why and have that why at the front and center of whatever it is you are doing. Your why is gonna serve as a driving force behind your goals and actions, and it's gonna provide you with that motivation and purpose that you need. And believe me, when we come across obstacles, things getting in the way, setbacks, your why is more important than ever. It teaches you resilience, and I definitely have learned almost having that emotional connection to your why, to your goal, is gonna make that journey all the more important, all the more meaningful. I can give you an example of say you're in school and for me like the difference between doing a subject like I don't know let's go with biology I hated biology in school and doing a subject like music I loved music and I naturally was better at it and it yeah came more naturally to me it was easier to perform well in that class however for whatever reason say I knew I needed to get an A or a B in biology that in itself is not enough of a why you got to connect that why to something a lot more sort of emotionally valuable to you so is it so that you can then get into this course um to go do something you actually really want to that's a bit of a weird way of wording it but I hope it just shows I you can even look at me someone who I 100% consider this my dream job. I think I'm so lucky to do this. It's still a pinch me moment when I wake up and this is my job. This is what I do every day. But there are elements and aspects of this job that I don't like, that I would rather not do, that take up a lot of time, that I don't feel good at, etc, etc. The tasks that I am most likely to procrastinate and procrastinate the hell out of. So when you have your why, like I said, at the center of what you do as your main focus you're going to feel that discipline and resilience when it comes to working towards your goals next one i'm sure you've heard this before how important it is to plan your day but strategically every morning or if you're someone who prefers to do it the night before you need to be planning your day and you need to be doing it in a way that categorizes your tasks And that doesn't make it complicated. You can actually keep this very, very simple. For example, I always recommend starting as simple as literally just ask yourself, what is the one thing you want out of today? What is the one thing you have to do today? Or it can be three non-negotiables. When we write ourselves, and believe me, I used to be this person, uh, you would just have a brain dump at the start of the day. You would write down 10 plus items on your to-do list and then there's no priority, there's no system to it. You just look at this list and you're going to get overwhelmed. Think about genuinely, if you use that method, I know I use that method. Sometimes when I'm in a rush, I still find myself using that method and it never ends well and I know it. But I want you to think about when you do that on a date when you you just have a really long to-do list of 10 plus things. When have you ever finished that list? I know I never ever do. And so you finish your day with a feeling of dissatisfaction 
it's not nice, you feel behind, you feel like you failed the day, when you probably didn't. You probably got a lot of the things done, but because you structured your day to be a success if you ticked off all these numerous things, then you're just not setting yourself up for success and it's not a great way to end your day. And a lot of the time, you you know, you don't need to be doing all of those things. So that's why always start with your main focus of the day, three non-negotiables, the things you have to get done. And believe me, when it comes to the end of the day, if you've completed the main focus, your three non-negotiables, you're going to feel like today was a success. That system is going to help you avoid burnout. It's going to help you get to the end of the day and feel less stressed, less behind. Anyway, I know that helps me out a lot and I know a lot of people use that method and I really recommend. Okay, another tip that is very simple but works wonders for me and that is setting timers. Now, I have never done the, what's it called? The Pomodoro effect? I think it's called that where you set like you do work for 25 minute chunks and then you'll do like a five minute break. I feel like 25 minutes is not enough time for me to like really get in the zone and focus. I feel like I have tried it before and it didn't work. I'm more of a I'd rather focus for like 40 minutes to an hour and then do like a 10 minute break or whatever. But relating to the setting timers, setting alarms, one of the biggest traps I find myself falling into is I'll have this big task or medium task, whatever it is, and it will take me all day when I know, actually, if I just got my head down and I focused, I could probably get that done in maybe an hour, maybe two hours, but if you allow yourself all day to do that task, it will take you all day. And believe me, this isn't just for the self-employed, the people who work from home. I used this when I worked in the office as well. If I only had like one deadline for the day, that's the one thing my boss is gonna ask me about at the end of the day, the one thing I have to do. If you allow yourself to take all day, you're gonna take all day. And it's the least productive thing you can do for yourself. Genuinely, go back to like how we were in school when we had periods and it was like this is your one hour time block of this class. I feel like that method works now as adults because well like depending on your schooling system this might not be relevant to you but for me that's what I was so used to. You only had an hour to dedicate to get that thing done for that class and I still have to use that method as an adult and yeah for the self-employed I know you get it. If you have something you absolutely have to do today it might reach the evening and you've still not done it and now you're cramming it into the evening and you're working at 9 p.m and that was not your plan you absolutely could have done it in the day when you had time and again that relates back to time blocking why i think it's just a foolproof system time blocking seems like this high effort sort of non-essential step to take in the morning when you're planning your day but i normally find it's going to take me under five minutes but it's going to save me like sometimes hours so okay if you say hypothetically you're planning your day you're gonna do your brain dump sure write all your main to-do list everything you got to get done but then I want you to break it down into your top priority or your three non-negotiables then I want you to also categorize your quick ticks things that maybe are gonna take under 10 minutes under 20 minutes and also I like doing a personal to-do list like errands or it might be house chores etc because they for me every day like something on on that list is personal I don't know why I find if they're kind of crossing over that's when I get overwhelmed looking at my to-do list and just feeling like I have so much on but if I have that separation and those boundaries I feel a bit better then once you've done that I want you to look at your to-do list and pop it all into your time block system if you're not procrastinating this this will take you under 10 minutes I promise when you time block you are naturally going to prioritize tasks which ensures that the important tasks are going to receive the time and attention that they need also a little tip with scheduling your day remember to put in the things you're excited for that you actually want to do whether it's like you have something fun to do in the evening remember to include those things in your day it can't just be like you look at your diary and it's bleak and you don't want to do today like I think it's definitely good to have your balance in there also okay back to timers um 
and specifically alarms for me a big big tip that's so easy um, is when something pops into my brain and I know I have to do it or I have to do it at a certain time I will literally just say it out to Alexa or I'll get my phone and I will set an alarm for that time and then if it's something say for example like a little task that I cannot do right now I don't have time I'm in the middle of something else. I don't know why I do this so much. I've gotten such a habit that, oh my God, it saved me in so many circumstances. Pop an alarm on your phone. I know on the iPhone, like you can set an alarm and you can title it. So say it goes off at 2 p.m. and that's your reminder to email John. (laughs) You can write that. Don't make the mistake I've done where I've set alarms on days, forgot to title it and then an alarm goes off at 4 p.m. and I'm like, oh, I know there's something really important I have to do right now and I've forgotten what it is. Next tip is use your breaks more wisely. Now, I believe it is so important that you take your break away from your desk. I always, I'm in such a habit of like, oh, I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm working away at it and I can feel I need a break, I'm getting tired. So I will just reach for my phone and scroll through social media and it doesn't, feel like a break you're not helping reset regain your energy you're not actually coming away from what you're doing properly and if you're staying in your desk there's almost like that blurred line between that being your workstation and also your downtime your unwind place it's important to both physically and mentally create a way clearer distinction between where you work and where you play, if you will. I know it's obvious and you're not going to do this with every break, but getting movement in. But genuinely, I find just standing up. If you're like me and you have a job where you work at a desk, you're sitting down a lot of the time, you're on a computer, getting up, literally just stretching your legs, walking to your kitchen, it makes a difference. I heard somewhere a while ago and now I find myself doing this a lot and I swear by this. If again you're someone who works on a computer since we are working on this thing and staring at this thing for so many hours of the day that's like so close to our face it is really important to give your eyes a break obviously like take a break from screens I'm not saying anything new here but genuinely like step away from your desk come out of work mode and let your eyes focus on something that's like several meters away for me since I live in like a high-rise building I can look out my window and I mean, I can probably see like miles away. (laughs) So yeah, let your eyes relax and focus on something that's really far away. I find this actually helps me prevent headaches. It helps me regain focus faster when I do go back to work. Sometimes with using my breaks, like I'll go call my sister. Some form of social interaction I find helps me personally. Um, You might want to go read a book. That's obviously a really nice way to spend a break. I mean, not a whole book that might take up a little bit too long but say you want to read a chapter it's just a crazy difference with like those breaks where you're actually relaxing your mind compared to the breaks where where you're still switched on and you're still sitting in the same place and you're not keeping track of time yeah biggest lesson for me there is a huge huge difference between procrastination and actually taking a break next point i have is making sure you have a for tomorrow or like for next week list. I find this is the top, top tip for me to feel like I have unburdened my brain, decluttered my brain from all the little tasks and things I'm thinking about, all the things I gotta do, all the projects that are coming up and I don't have enough time to do them. Honestly, write yourself a for tomorrow, just surrender, surrender the day. Like, okay, today is done. I have done as much as I can and you know, don't worry about it because I'm not going to forget it. I've written it down and that is for tomorrow. It like frees up your mental space and obviously reduces stress. It allows you to actually unwind a bit better and relax in the evening, which results in better rest and therefore performing better the next day. Also, big thing for me I was finding when I wasn't doing this was I would start my morning, I'd start my day or start a new week. I just, even if I kind of knew what I had to do today I would procrastinate more in the morning and my mornings it would take me longer to get into the work day whereas if I already have like you know somewhat of a list prepared that's something I can dive into 
Okay, relating back to like distractions, even something that is, you know, seemingly important or productive task-wise, like answering emails, bouncing between tasks is gonna break your focus and is ultimately gonna lead to a less productive work day. So my point is just be wary of that. I find a tip that really helps me is actually dedicating time in my day to, for example, answer emails, answer messages, like those kind of tasks, group them together if you can, obviously. If something important comes through that you have to reply to, then yeah, that happens. But where you have control to group those tasks together, absolutely do. A huge thing that stunts my productivity is jumping between tasks like in the moment you're like tricking yourself that you're being productive because you're like oh I'm thinking about all these things that I'm doing and I'm doing a little bit of them but you find yourself doing a little bit of them and not actually completing anything not actually doing anything worthwhile on any of these projects and yeah that's a big tip I have next one this is more of a fun one create a playlist that actually motivates you. Will's like the king of this. He is someone who I know when he goes to the office um, and he's doing some sort of task where he has his head down and he's just like working by himself. He absolutely is going to have like Hans Zimmer or some composer, movie composer banging away in his ears. Um, and it's a tip I really like as well. I definitely use it a lot when I was a student and it's something I like to still do now. Put together a playlist that actually gets you working and then if you use it enough, honestly, you'll associate those sounds with like, okay, it's time to crack on. I definitely personally prefer instrumental music. I, For me, I know like even if I put songs on there that have singing, they have words, I find it distracting personally utilize the power of technology so like for our phones for our laptops um a lot of the time they have built-in widgets where you can like stick your to-do list your reminders that app you can make a little widget out of it and put it on your home screen your lock screen your wallpaper this is the perfect example of a tip that is so easy to implement um but makes all the difference if you are faced with that to-do list like every time you open your phone you're never gonna forget about it (laughs) you're gonna see it every time unless you start to become a bit complacent then you don't want to do that you do want to make it this thing that you know to check that you remember to check that you don't just ignore and have it be say for example your top three priorities or a top three things you don't want to forget for today another one is really work with your routine and understand your routine understand your body Understand if you are a person who likes to tackle the big tasks first. I think I probably am this person, even though some days I convince myself I'm not because I'm feeling a bit lazy and I just want to, yeah, start with the little things and just start ticking things off. And that sometimes for me is actually procrastination. Yeah, I know I'm definitely, I'm more of a morning person. So if I tackle the big things in the morning, that's when I have the most energy, I feel the most creative, inspired, whatever, I'm gonna do my best work. But that might not be the case for you. If you're more of a night owl, you might be someone who you wanna ease into your day. And so tackle those little tasks first. And then once you're almost warmed up, that's you ready to really dive into and just concentrate on the rest of the day, like focus on your big tasks. Of course, your girl is gonna mention the morning routine. I love a good morning routine. I have full faith in a good morning routine, absolutely setting you up for success. Okay, maybe you might be a person who uh, wakes up at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. and you like to do monk mode. I know some people do this and I know it means they achieve so much. I am only ever this person if I have like a strict deadline that day. That might be the morning routine that works for you. Like you dive into work first thing when your brain is hasn't been like distracted yet and you might get your like mundane tasks out of the way yeah that system might work for you or you might be a person who likes to really have time for themselves in the morning and do these nice rituals these self-care steps that puts you in the right headspace ensures that you do get that time for you and then you jump into work my point is the power of making sure you 
you optimize your morning routine to fit you. It's not just about your morning, it's how it's gonna impact you for the rest of the day. Next one, help future you out as much as you can. And so like, for example, I am not a fan of meal prepping. I've tried it, I hate it. I hate spending my Sunday cooking up a bunch of things and then I know I'll get sick of eating that same dinner or same lunch four days in a row. I admire you. I so look up to you if this is you, but I, oh, I'm not that person. I wish I was. However, my little spin on it, because I know for me, especially lunchtime as someone who works from home, lunchtime is where I can easily lose like so much of my afternoon, just trying to make some sort of recipe or thinking about what to eat, etc. So I find when in the week I'm say cooking up your main protein or whatever main part of a meal for me like chicken or salmon I will remember to cook the whole pack or like make three meals of it then and there whilst I am cooking it is almost no extra effort to just make more and then store it in the fridge and then those days where I'm busy with work but I also know for me to perform my best and be a productive baddie I gotta feel myself I've got to eat well and so if I have something like chicken already pre-prepared and in the kitchen I can quickly whip up like a chicken salad or something just the main thing that's going to take time out my day it's a good way of ensuring like you're still gonna eat well I'm also a bit of a delivery addict it's actually getting worse and if I order something that's healthy then I tell myself like there's nothing wrong with it but then of course I could be saving money I could be saving a lot of money ordering your lunches is not cheap sometimes it's a nice treat but yeah by doing that little trick it helps me just eat more home-cooked meals last tip and maybe one of my favorites but sometimes the hardest bit about being productive is just starting and starting the task starting that task that you've been putting off that you've been procrastinating that you've been dreading and that's why I love the five minute rule um and this has worked for me on so many occasions if I say have a big project or a big video to edit that I'm a bit overwhelmed about how to edit just something that I've been putting off I will tell myself it's almost like you trick yourself you tell yourself you know what I'm just gonna spend five minutes of my time on this just five minutes and after five minutes I can give up set a timer be meticulous about this set a timer and just start like all excuses out the window because it's only five minutes right so get to your desk do it like 99% of the time you are gonna find yourself working past those five minutes and then there you go you've broken that uncomfortable feeling of starting a task it's now suddenly way less daunting it's quite a good little strategy for overcoming that initial resistance and it stops it feeling like such a high effort thing and yeah a lot of the time like what stops us from achieving the things we want it's like the fear of starting it that initial procrastination so that's my little tip on how to beat that those are my productivity tips i'm not realizing i totally should have asked you guys what yours are I feel like I'll I'll still put up a little thing on Instagram and I don't know maybe I'll read them on the next episode or I'll just share them on Instagram if you're not already following the Instagram make sure you are so that you can get involved sometimes I will share like the theme of the week and I'll get your two cents on it I'll get your opinion on it whatever you have to say um but yeah, this week your girl forgot. Sorry. But I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope this podcast put you in a good mood. I hope it put you in a mood to make you feel like you can do anything. And it's true. You can achieve anything. Also, just a reminder, like the most successful, most productive people in the world do not do all these things every day. We're human and you absolutely have to remember that. We're, we're literally not robots. Like we're not designed to just work 24 seven and not take breaks. So take care of yourself, but also believe in yourself. You got this. And yeah, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Bloom with Becca. I'll see you guys next week. Sending all my love your way. 
Thank you, my loves, for listening to this week's episode of Bloom with Becca. Be sure to follow the Bloom with Becca Instagram page to get involved each week with your questions, your stories, your thoughts on different topics, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys next week for a new episode. Love you. Bye. Bye.